Okay, so are you ready for this? We're diving into something that just seems, I don't know, kind of wild. Trump doing a rally at Madison Square Garden. Like, what's the play here? I mean, come on, New York, Trump country. It doesn't exactly track, right? So we're going to try to make sense of it, right? About Thankfully, this piece in The Independent digs into some of the thinking, or at least speculation, around this whole MSG thing. First things first, though, we got to set the scene a bit. The last couple elections, yeah, Trump did not exactly win New York, like not even close. I mean, the article even pointed out, you got to go all the way back to Reagan to find a Republican who actually won the state. And you think about that alongside MSG, it hits different. It's more than just a place to hold a rally. It's New York. You know, you don't book MSG if you're just worried about voter turnout. It's an image thing. Right. Like it's sending a message. And this article, they say Trump is just like fixated on this thing, right. bragging about filling the garden, that kind of talk. What's driving that, you think? Is it just a hometown thing trying to prove something to, well, I guess himself, even though he's technically a Florida man now? Yeah. Well, there's got to be some of that, right? It's where he built everything. The whole Trump image started in New York. So maybe it's a way to grab that back. Be like, see, still got it even if you don't vote for me. Plus, let's be real, there's the whole UFC thing from a few years back. Trump got booed <laughs> at MSG. That's got to sting. And we know how he hates that. So could be part of it, right? Rewrite the story, get a win back in that same spot. So hometown pride with a side of erasing the booing makes sense, especially given, well, everything we know about him. But then again, he does love a good show, right? Always has. So is this just more of that Trump being Trump got to grab those headlines? Totally. But this time, it's more than just putting on a show. The article even quotes him, right? I can win New York, he says. Now, whether he actually believes that, that's the million dollar question. Sounds a lot like good old Trump bluster to me. Yeah, because, come on, let's be real. Flip in New York. That's a long shot, even for him. No doubt. But even if he doesn't win the state, the whole thing still does something for him. Think about it. The base all fired up, Trump in the House, that energy can swing things, especially those down-ballot races. You mean even if his name's not on the ballot in New York, just him being there could impact other races? Exactly. Picture it. A close race, maybe for Congress or something, this just got a lot of Republicans, Trump shows up, boom, that might be all it takes to get him fired up, put the guy over the top. It's about more than just him winning. It's about using that base to get power, even in places where he might lose. Huh. That's a good point. It's bigger than just the presidency. It's about the whole chessboard, you know. And speaking of big plays, did you see the part about this ultra magi experience they're selling? A million bucks. A million dollars to get up close and personal with Trump at the rally. Wild. See, that's Trump, the businessman, at work. Whether you love the guy or hate him, got to respect the hustle. Campaign or not, the man knows how to make a buck. <laughs> Seriously, though, this thing could be a cash cow. You tap into those diehard supporters, the ones who will pay anything to be in the room. That's pure profit. Right. It's like a campaign rally, but also like the world's most extensive political fundraiser. Kind of sends a message, though, doesn't it? Like you want access. Better open that wallet wide. Oh, and there's the whole prank thing, too. People are reserving tickets, but not going just to mess with them, make the crowd look bad. I mean, got to admit, it's kind of funny. It's that Internet age weirdness, right? Like politics meets mean culture. They're not trying to change the election. It's about poking fun, making a point, even if it's just being a pain. Whether it actually work, that's a whole other thing. But it shows you just how unpredictable these events can be now with everyone online trying to get in on the action. All right. So we've got hometown pride, ego, attention grabbing, the whole down ballot thing, cashing in, even some Internet trolls for good measure. It's a lot, even for Trump. You know, it's funny about those pranksters. They might be onto something. Think about it. Empty seats at MSG. That's not just bad optics. It's like a direct hit to the whole Trump image. Yeah, and he hates to look bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be one of his biggest fears. But, okay, let's say, just for fun, that it actually works. Packed house, media's eating it up, the whole nine yards. What happens then? Now, that's the real question, isn't it? Because that kind of win, even if it's just symbolic, that could really juice him up. Like, see, told you I can break all the rules and still come out on top. And it's not just him, though, right? What does that do to the rest of the Republicans, seeing Trump pull something like that off, in New York, no less? Oh, yeah, imagine that. Suddenly, that whole playbook, the us against the world, the own the live stuff, it doesn't look so crazy anymore, even if it drives the moderates nuts. So you're saying this thing could basically decide what the Republican Party looks like going forward? Could be a turning point, that's for sure. Like, are they going to go full Trump? 
even harder now? Or do they try to move on, find something else? This rally could be the deciding factor. Okay, so let's flip it. The pranksters win. MSG's half empty. The news is all, Trump's lost his touch. What happens then? Damage control time. Even Trump, you know, Mr. Teflon Don, even he's got to feel that, right? That's a public whiff. Gives everyone who says he's washed up that his time's over. Whole lot of ammo. So those never Trump Republicans, the ones who think he's too much, too loud to actually win, they finally get their chance to push back. Exactly. Like, see, we told you this is what happens. Maybe they get enough momentum to try and steer things in a different direction away from all the well, Trumpness of it all. So basically, it's like we're watching a fork in the road for the entire Republican Party and that one rally that's going to decide which way they go. Pretty much. And the crazy part is either way is still possible. It all depends on how this thing goes down, how it looks, how the media spins it, and if it actually gets people fired up or not. Even outside of New York, it matters. It's like this one event in this one place. It's not even the election yet, but it says so much about where things are headed. Exactly. And it shows you how much of this is all about the story, you know, mm. not just policies, not just who wins or loses, but who gets to control the narratives. Mm. And Trump, man, he knows how to tell the story. Yeah, he knows how to put on a show, that's for sure. But stories change, right? Public opinion can turn on a dime these days. Absolutely. That's what makes this whole thing so wild. Mm -hmm. It's a gamble, a huge one. And it can go other way. And we've been talking about the Republicans and all that, but what about the rest of us? What does this say about America right now, you know? It's a good question. Why does it matter so much? A rally in a state that doesn't even like him, by a guy who's not even president anymore. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. It's like, yeah, we're still stuck in this weird Trump vortex, you know? He's yeah. not the president, but it's like, he never really left. The guy knows how to hold our attention, for better or worse. It's that saying, right? Things will never be the same around here. We're definitely in the aftermath of the Trump era, that's for sure. No doubt. And this is what it looks like, right? Yeah. Populism blowing up. Nobody trusts the system anymore. Politicians acting like reality TV stars. It's been brewing for a while, but he turned it up to 11. Weaponized the whole thing. At this rally, it's like the perfect example. Forget about actual ideas. It's all about him, the show, getting people riled up. Exactly. And that's what makes it so important, right? It shows us what elections are really about now. It's not picking what policies you like. It's like picking between two different versions of America. Whose story do you believe in? So where does that leave us? You know, regular people just trying to make sense of it all while the world feels like it's going nuts. What are we supposed to do? Million dollar question, right? Right. I think. First thing, we got to wake up, like really see what's going on. Everyone's trying to play us, the news, social media, all of it. So don't just accept what you see. Question everything. Find different sides of the story, you know? Be smarter than the algorithm, that's what you're saying. Exactly. And we got to talk to each other. Yeah, even the people we disagree with. Find some common ground. Remember that we're not enemies, even when it feels that way. Yeah. It's the only way forward. That's a good note to end on. Even now, with everything so messed up, we still get a say. We can choose something better, something hopeful together. Well, that's going to do it for this deep dive. Hopefully this whole Trump MSG thing makes a little more sense now, or at least you got some new questions to ponder. As always, keep your BS detectors on, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive.